Hello and welcome to Encore coming up on today's show. Mais qu'est-ce qu'il fait? He's been voted the funniest person in France and plays to sold out crowds across Europe. Now French comedy star Gad Amalé takes his show on the road and crosses the Atlantic to conquer North America. I just started to do stand-up in English. I don't actually really speak English. I just memorized the whole stand-up act. We talked with the comic to find out if what works in Paris stand-up makes the cut in New York. All right, well, excellent. I'm joined here by Gad El Malay. Thank you so much for coming in and Thanks for having me. on the program. Um, you're a giant in the French comedy scene. <laughs> you want to start by that? I'm yeah. a giant. Wow, <laughs> it's very humbling. Thank you so much. Well, that it's, it's true, really. In the, in the scene here, and you've acted in dozens of movies as well as directed, uh, you've uh, been uh, honored by the French Ministry of Culture for your work. You sell it to capacity crowds across Europe. Now, though, you are pretty much flipping the script. You're heading to North America. This to uh, begin uh, a new show. This is Oh My Gad. Yeah. It's entirely in English. Oh, what nice. made you want to do it? Wow. It's. Um, I think the the the. the I, I just wanted to be excited again. I think um, you know it's um, when you do your um, your thing and. I'm really thankful and grateful with the French audience. I'm, you have, you do big capacity, big rooms, and big, and then you're like, wow, I need to be excited. I need a challenge, and it's not only the American dream, which is <clears throat> true. I'm so happy to go and perform in English, but it's something very personal. It's like I want to challenge myself. I want to do something hard. I want to get excited before going on stage, and this is what this uh, project brings uh, to me. I'm scared. I have those uh, little uh, butterflies before going on stage. Am I going to be funny in English? How, when, who's in the crowd? So, you know, just to, to, to be able to live this experience, this is why I, I'm doing this in English. People are nice here. Nice. Come on, I, I, I went shopping. We're not used to it in Paris. People are rude. They give you this attitude, right? So I, I, I shopped in this store. I walked into that store. This young man here in New York City came up to me. He was like, welcome. How are you doing today? My name is Jason. If you need anything, please feel free to ask. I'll be more than happy to help. <laughs> I was like, Jason, this is too intense. <laughs> Of course, someone for the moment who uh, your name has been brought up uh, many times in association with is Jerry Seinfeld, you're often referred yeah. to as uh, the French uh, Jerry Seinfeld. What do you make of that comparison? Uh, comparisons are always uh, weird because it's flattering and I'm such a big fan and he's my friend now, he's my brother and I love his work, but I love him in, in real life. We're friends, but... Um, I would say that it's better to be compared to someone you uh, you admire, uh, obviously. Uh, but the f I think people compare to us because I'm into those observational comedy, everyday life, and um, you know little things uh, that becomes on stage huge because of our uh, analyse and you know perspective. This is why I think they compared us, but. Um, I'm flattered, you know, it's it's great to be compared to, to this man, you know. So they asked him the same question. Indeed. Yeah. To be the yeah. American oh, Gad. Yeah, he said about me, he's not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. I texted this girl this morning, I said, what about a drink right after my show? She said, why not? And then Spanish dancer, Spanish dancer, <laughs> two firecrackers, a glass of champagne, a building, a pair of high heels, a monkey covering his eyes. <laughs> And eggplant. I didn't know what to do, I swear. I sent her back an ambulance. Now, you've spent the past few months really crafting this new solo show you've been at, performing at Joe's Pub, yeah. uh, The Comedy Cellar. That, of course, is yeah. very much a, a rite of passage for any stand-up yeah, exactly. comedian. Yeah, Comedy Cellar is, uh, is home now. I go there almost every night, every weekend. So I do my, my entire show, my hour at Joe's Pub, and I go and try out and craft my, my, my jokes at Comedy Cellar. This is like a legendary, um, iconic place. It's the best comedy club in the US in the world maybe the best comedians go there you can see 
one night, um, I don't know, Louis C.K., Chris Rock, you know, popping up like this, oh, and Jerry and... Uh, Without any notice, of course. I mean, yeah. that's just like one, and any evening you can get anyone like yeah, that. Yeah, it's very, um, and, and it's great to be uh, to be around those comedians, hang out with them and talk about jokes. And um, I really like it. I really like it. And they don't know who I am. So it's great. So uh, is there anything then when you were starting there, when you're doing, when you were performing and in those small venues, are there things that just fell flat starting off? Of course. Of I bumped so many <laughs> nights. I was, you know what? First of all, they 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 don't they 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 don't get my name. They butcher my name, and then I go on stage, and then I have my accent, and then it's only difficulties. There's nothing easy in that project, but I love it because when I'm funny in English in those clubs where no one knows me, that's funny stuff. Do you guys use Uber? Yeah. yeah. Do you do this? You call Uber, and then you track the guy on your screen, and you just stunned at his creative way of getting to the place. <laughs> Those guys do crazy shit you cannot even do with a real car. I don't know how they do that. I don't know. Those little cars are crazy, like, I don't know, complete turns, jumping from a street to another, going on the water. Oh my God, how you do this? Going from two minutes away to nine minutes away for some reason. Now, you've appeared on the same stage with British comedian Eddie Izzard. Yes. All right, you guys did a show last time. It was just past April. It was, yes, uh, exactly. Franglish. It was Franglish night. He did, he did his uh, show in uh, French, and I did my show in English. I admire this guy because he does such a great... Um, it's also challenging. He does shows in French. He's a British comedian. And in German now. Mm -hmm. And he wants to work in Arabic. And it's great. And I think we should all try to cross over and to mix languages. This is what you're doing. <laughs> That's what we're doing here. It's very true. Yeah. French range report. Not a, lot of, not a lot of jokes. Not yet. No, it's not funny. But you, no, <laughs> you do it's serious stuff. Very, That's why. Very serious. Well, speaking of Eddie, he uh, joined us here at Encore in uh, 2014. He spoke with our Eve Jackson, and uh, he discussed very much the difference in terms of humor in different nations. Let's take a look. Oh. Humor is not national. There is no French or British or German or, or Chinese sense of humor, I don't believe. There's just mainstream and alternative comedians in every country. And the alternative ones can link up easier. We have an international code, which is the subjects we're talking about. Human sacrifice, cats and dogs with guns, fish that could take over the world. So, so do you agree with what we heard Eddie say there? Is there a real difference then between French humor, American humor, no, and different countries? No, we, we, we always talk about that with Eddie and other comedians, and um, we don't think there is a French humor and Moroccan humor and American humor. Of course, references and, you know, a way of performing, because you're from Morocco and you have more gestures, and from France you have this... Uh, puns and play on words and Americans you're more sharp efficient stand-up one-liner thing but humor um, you know being clever observing life it's it's universal you know I think if you translate some of my stuff and his or Jerry in Russian they're gonna laugh because it's about everyday life. Well, that's what I was gonna just ask you. I mean, you were born in Casablanca, yeah. in Morocco, so that you speak uh, Arabic, French, English, Hebrew. Hebrew. You've done acts in all of this, uh, mixing a bit. Is there, though, some material that is lost in translation? Sometimes, sometimes, especially with the French language, if I'm gonna be doing uh, puns, right? Play mm -hmm. on words. Mm -hmm. um, I had some jokes that I could never translate because, you, you know. And also in the tradition of uh, uh, the, the English and American um, uh, stand-up, they not really, they're not really into that. They don't really like the play on words. They, they don't, ah, they're like, no, 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 we're not. This it's is the title of your tour, though. Yeah, but no, that one not in English, not in English. Um, so it's just a way of bringing jokes. But, you know, I did some jokes in Arabic, Hebrew, English, and French, and they are the same. Mm. Because talking about skiing, couple, uh, sexuality, uh, being drunk, traveling, um, how is it to, to be on an airplane and being scared? You can do it in English or Arabic. It's the same guy. Mm. And, you know, if people can relate, you know. But are there subjects you avoid? Um, not that I avoid, just that I don't feel comfortable, you know. Um, it's very interesting because what I did in English, I think performing in another language is more, uh, liber do we say liberating? Yeah. Liberating. Liber okay. yeah. yeah, exactly. It's, it's liberating sometimes because you're going to go on some, you know, subjects that you don't do uh, in your first uh, language. And, for example, I had a bit about gun control 
in the U.S. Very funny bits. I would never do this in French. I don't know why, mm. because because there's no guns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. True. I mean, people perhaps can't relate. With I, I think if they can relate, it's okay. You know, it's okay. Like, do you have any favorite English expressions? Um, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, or ones you don't understand. You know, just something like for me, for example, I never understood in French uh, la mayonnaise n'a pas pris. <laughs> and I think it's very a funny a funny expression that for our viewers that just means uh, like if you go on a date for example and there just wasn't any chemistry you have to you know we make also uh, our mayonnaise by hand that also is a different mayonnaise, it wouldn't work it's in, a great in, one uh, it's English. a great one yeah no the only thing in English that I not that I don't understand but I really find funny it's that you use the opposite to say something like one day I said to a girl I texted this girl and I said let's have a drink. Mm tonight and she said I'm down so because she said I'm down I said no problem let's do it next week she said yes, why yes, I said because yeah. you're depressed yeah. I know I've been through this kind of moment it's in my life so we, she said no I'm down means I'm totally up you're up for it so how should I know this you know it's um that's very funny it's like I'm good do you want to do, do you want do you want to have do you want to have something to eat I'm good which means, once again, I'm can. good is not good. Exactly. It's all good. <laughs> but we're going to have to leave it there. That's all we have time for. But it is uh, truly a pleasure, Gad, to have had you here. Uh, we are going to end with a clip uh, from uh, your tour, uh, your U.S. tour once again, which is Oh My Gad. So we're going to play that in just a sec. But I want to thank you all for uh, joining us here for Encore. And remember, you can always find us on our website as well as on Twitter and on Facebook. We'll leave you now with a look at God MLA's new show. That's Oh My God, take a look. I just moved here to New York City. I'm so happy I got a place. Not easy, not easy. Found an apartment, so, so many of them. Uh, when I found a place I liked, the broker told me, uh, you gotta decide on this pot right now. I said, let me think about it. No, it's New York City, you gotta decide now. <laughs> She said, there's another guy really interested. There's always this other guy in New York City. I don't know who the fuck is this guy, but I wanna meet this guy. I mean, I wanna meet with this guy, sit with him and talk to this guy. He must be crazy busy taking everyone's apartment, but I wanna see this guy. <laughs> 